Welcome back to the SolidWorks Live studio in the 3D Experience Playground at 3D Experience World 2020. We just finished general session where today was all about community, innovation, and education. One of the keynote speakers we had today, we're joined in the studio, is Sam Rogers. Sam, welcome to the SolidWorks Live. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. So Sam, right before we went on air, we had uh, the world's fastest jet pack, but you corrected me, it is the world's fastest jet suit. So well, We call it a jet suit, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the jet suit that you have here on the desk. Yeah, so this is our most recent fully 3D printed jet suit. Uh, we th this version is 3D printed in uh, DMLS aluminium, SLS nylon, and DMLS 316L steel. Uh, and this is, like I say, our most recent iteration of it. We will be releasing pr a new version in probably the next couple of months, but uh, as yet, this is the most recent. So, now that's really interesting because you spoke a lot about that this morning, the versioning process or the iterative design process. And one of the things that allowed you to bring such a unique design to life in a short period of time, you talked a lot about the rapid iterative design process. Tell us a little bit about that, like kind of how this whole thing got started and your need to move through design so quickly. Yeah, so it started with Richard Browning, who invented the suit, he thought he had a hunch that you could, by augmenting the human body with some form of propulsion, allow a human to fly with the most minimal equipment possible. It turns out that the result we landed on was five micro turbines attached to your body, two on each arm and one on the back. Um, but he started that in the most easily and quickly testable method, which is just going out, getting the necessary equipment to attach a turbine to your arm and disprove the first principles that you might assume as an engineer, that the gyroscopic effect of a spindle and turbine wheel and impeller spinning at 117,000 RPM, which is almost 2,000 revs a second, which to me is like unimaginable in terms of revs a second, that that effect would make it very hard to move your arm because of the gyroscopic effect. So he was sitting there going, I think I could put a turbine engine strapped to my arm. Yes, exactly. Both of them. Well, he started with one, <laughs> uh, but, and he just proved that you, you wouldn't be able to move right. your arm or you wouldn't be able to control it because you'd think it would be very hard to move your arm with that effect, like a gyroscope balancing on a string. Also, that the thrust from one of these engines is going to be very aggressive and horrible and trying to rip your arm off. It's just a spongy pushing force. So all it's doing is just pushing on your arm. You lock your arm out like this. It's just a spongy force. It's not aggressively trying to remove a limb. So he found out those two things with the first test, which was just attaching the engine to, to his arm with available DIY store materials. So that's the first thing proved. Then the next step was two engines, one on each arm, replicate the DIY store rig for here, uh, for the other arm. And it means he can now jump around with the kind of low gravity yeah. hops. Uh, which is which is really cool, and then prove that you can stay balanced, and by moving your arms, you can control the whole system, and it's not it, it's not uncontrollable. So, so yeah, those were his first steps, and he did those as fast as possible. So it's it's just testing something as quickly as possible, learning what you can, learning that it's somewhat possible, and then progressing as fast as you can. But you mentioned in your talk too, it wasn't <laughs> just about learning what you can do. Part of that process was learning what you can't do. You talked about learning from safe failure. Yes. And you guys showed some really f they're fun examples for us to watch here. But what was important when you're working with something so violent as you, what was it, 117,000 RPM? Yeah. turbine there's a lot of safety to take into consideration with that you're lifting yourself off the ground tell us what that process kind of looked like a little bit yes so the ethos of gravity in and that's helped us come so far in the kind of two and a bit years that we've been a company is that we do these rapid tests as fast as we can but also any of those tests that would result in major injury or uh, m massive fi financial trouble or anything like that, then it's not worth taking the risk. As long as, say, the, the test of a flight test is not high enough or fast enough that you come out with more than bumps and scrapes, then it's not worth doing. So you'll see all of the flights we do are low and relatively slow. The faster flights we do over water, still staying low. So at any time, because no system is perfect, if you have some kind of failure or a problem, you want to be able to get up again from that, right. from that um, result whatever happens during that test so that's the ethos we've applied to the rapid testing and prototyping and that's got us to where we are where we are today so today yeah this comes to you sam tell us how you got involved with this this design process so we started out as kind of this D, diy process buying components from the store building the turbines putting them together doing some testing at some point 
we had to come up with something that looked as beautiful as this and kind of engineer all these components together. Tell us like what that process was like, some of the, maybe some of the design tools you use, some of the challenges you had to overcome. So previously to joining Gravity, I was involved in a lot of kind of AM bureaus where you get CAD files in, parts out, and I saw a lot of parts that were not designed for the AM additive manufacturing process, and specifically in metal. The parts really need to be designed for the process from the ground up. Uh, to best benefit from it. And what I was working on is a lot of uh, 3D printed rocket engines. So you have a lot of intricate conformal cooling channels around the chambers. Uh, and uh, when I was growing up, I was always building kind of solid rocket motors and, and RC planes and things like that. So uh, I loved flight and loved high power systems. Anything that makes <laughs> a lot of noise, you really feel the energy from it. I love fire. Uh, that, that's that I find all that stuff really cool. But then mixing that with design for additive manufacture so you can make something really light and very efficient with internal cooling channels like we have around the turbines here also combined with cinematic design which i think is really cool trying to make technology look like it is out of a movie and i think there's so much so much opportunity for that and this is the prime project f for me that is something like it's out of a film already as just the capability you can then design it to hopefully look like some kind of prop from, from a movie. Yeah, I mean, when I was watching you on stage, I'm not going to lie, this looks like a movie that came out, I think it was 2009-ish. A yeah. lot of folks are probably very familiar <laughs> with. And you had actually mentioned on your YouTube channel, is that where you guys have the, that video you were talking about? Yes. Where you did yeah. the side-by-side? -side? Yeah. So tell us where your YouTube channel is, actually. So uh, uh, Gravity Industries, okay. uh, on, uh, we put a lot of our testing on YouTube, but really at Take on Gravity on Instagram is where you can see the majority of our, our testing and things like the race series, which is the one of the next steps of yeah, Gravity. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that. Here which we'll that. talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, Instagram is a really good place to, to follow us because we put tests even that we've done the day before up on there. So it's a good place to see all of our recent doings. Very cool. So yeah, you guys, you said you have a video where you actually are almost mimicking the movie that took place. And that wasn't intentional. It was just kind of like, this is like how the design process went, right? Yeah, well, someone put a side-by-side -side video of the, the Tony Stark hover, uh, where he first gets the thrusters on his legs and then lands back down about six seconds later. It yeah. very closely matches Richard's first hover with the leg engines and the two arm engines, where where he hovers up and goes along for about the first six-second flight where where... Richard realized that there was some possibility here for human flight with attaching turbines to your body. And they, they, they fly for almost exactly the same time and hit the ground at the same time. It's quite a cool clip. So you went from getting up off the ground to about <laughs> six seconds, and then you took the suit, and you guys broke the world record with this, right? Yeah, so the recent Guinness World Record uh, we achieved was 85 miles an hour in the wing leg wing <laughs> version of the jet suit. So that is where you have a a wingsuit style ram air inflated leg wing between between your legs. And as you pick up speed forwards, that leg wing inflates and becomes an aerodynamic profile. Yep. And what it basically allows you to do is get closer to horizontal flight by tipping you over like this. You're pro propelling more of your thrust backwards. And it means we got up to 85 miles an hour for this world record. That's absolutely incredible. I couldn't imagine going that fast flying not in an, in an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the closer you are to the ground, the faster it seems. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you guys have gone from uh, designing this to testing it, breaking records with it. And the next steps are, is you're going to be racing these? Yes, so one of the next steps for gravity is we have something with that is kind of like a jet ski in terms of there's no formal application for it. It's You can move someone very fast in a very dynamic and mobile way. Uh, with this, you can take off from your two feet, so an area that big, and then go wherever you want, regardless of what's in the way. Uh, so what do we do with that? Well, we're going to put guys and girls from different backgrounds all racing in them over water so it's safe. Yep. And also, if you, if you have crashes during the race, then they go into the water, a load of steam is thrown up, and then the whole <laughs> suit is neutrally buoyant, so you just float there like a uh, looking unsatisfied while everyone else flies over you. You um, showed a lot of examples. What did you call it where uh, they come in and they kind of... Oh, we, we, yeah, it seems it's become a customary thing now. If someone goes in the water, you fly over and spin around them and taunt, taunt them. them a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like a lot of fun. When are people going to be able to have going to be able to watch these races? When are you guys looking at uh, so showing these? The first race is going to be in Bermuda at the end of March. Uh, we're going to be we're going to have probably a five pilot race there, 
And again, best place to follow that is Instagram, but we will be we'll be putting out an edit of that and we may even be live streaming it. So that's going to be the first of our international race series. So this is really cool talking about the jetpack. I actually or the jet suit. I have to get that <laughs> correct. Let's go back a little bit. One of the things you mentioned is all of this is done with additive manufacturing, 3D yeah. printing in metal. That presents some really unique challenges, right? Talk a, a bit about how you overcome some of the challenges to design metal components that are going to be created with additive manufacturing. Yeah, so as we were speaking about before, not many people know, in the, as, as the public, not many people know that metal 3D printing even exists, let alone how to design for it. And it's a very different design mentality to that of traditional manufacture, whereas uh, simply, we're, we're adding just the material we want, we're not cutting away from a block of material. Uh, so when you're designing these parts that are printed in aluminium, you want to design them for the lowest cross-sectional area possible. They, all, they want to be light as an additive manufactured part, kind of a shell of a part. They yeah. don't want any thick areas because that causes warping and things like this. So this is all designed and optimized for additive. And it's the, the whole suit, kind of, I've done most of the design of all the parts you see here. It's printed in nylon, aluminium steel. This is all steel. designed in SolidWorks. In SolidWorks You've done yeah. this all in SolidWorks, right? Exactly, yeah. So I use SolidWorks to, to do all of the design here. Um, the new version of the suit, you can't see it from this angle, but there's a set of electronics that come around to the front of the suit here. Yep. We're going to be re removing those. So it's just going to be just the backpack and the arm mounts in the most simplistic form possible. So all, you, we can't see this on camera here, but all these electronics on the front, you're going to build on, like into, you're gonna integrate it into the into back the portion? Yes, so okay. it's just a, a modular three-piece suit. So you're not done with the iterative process of no, this at all? we're never really happy with the design of it, <laughs> and none of the suits are the same as well. Everyone has like a little tweak on it um, yeah. that we'll make every single time, which is why technically it's still a prototype. There's no like production run of these. That's also, you know, well, that's really the value of additive manufacturing as well. It's you can make a change from one delivered product to the next. You don't you're not locked into, OK, we need to make five of these or 500 of these. You're literally we can make one and now we can make another one of these, right? Yes, exactly. So we build one at a time. We've reduced the manufacture time of the suit from one week to a day now. So we can once the parts arrive, which take a couple of days to build, uh, we can assemble the whole suit in a day. And yeah, none of them are the same. We with a, with AM additive manufacturing, we we can uh, we can change the design every single time. Like if you made a mold for an injection molded part, you co it costs loads to make that mold, and then we can't design tweak at all. So. So there's a lot of value to working with this additive process and to kind of not only help you, but help others who are looking at creating components with additive manufacturing. You've actually uh, come up with a program to like really help people get designing for additive metal parts off the ground. Tell us a little bit about Additive X. Yeah, so this is a company I founded, uh, which is based on the experience of designing for additive manufacture. And it's, there's, the, the avenues of that are designing for AM and helping people to do that as a kind of consultancy thing. Also design, doing end-to-end, -end designing a product um, for AM and prototyping it for companies, and also for education in STEM and professional education, just teaching people how to design for it, whether that's like talks or, or like hands-on materials and stuff. Sure. Um, but yes, uh, Additive X is, is to help people design for AM because, because not many people are aware of it. They don't know the, the benefits they can get from actually optimizing a part to be designed for AM. And like I said, in, in AM bureaus and stuff, you see like blocky big designs coming through the whole time. And it, it's, it helps so much to actually design the thing for the process because then yeah. you can chop it off the build plate and you don't need to do all of this post-processing that you need to do if you, don't need, if you don't know how to design for it because you end up doing machining operations and all of this stuff that you just don't need. Um, combining all of that with what I guess I call this kind of cinematic design is there's so many cool products that you can make look like it was out of a movie. Um, so combining that as much as possible into making kind of futuristic alien-like designs you can do with additive manufacture because it's, 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 it lends itself to, like, uh, to conformal, complicated structures. Yeah, some of those traditional manufacturing processes aren't really well suited to create something like this. So this, this process really actually allows you to go beyond what you might be able to with traditional manufacturing processes as well. Exactly, and the better you design for AM, the more reliable every single build you do is gonna be. Like the, these arm mounts, as I mentioned in the talk, they started out as a fully massive 3D printed part, um, which is about this 300 mil tall, 400 mil wide. That's insanely expensive to build and takes up a load of volume in the metal printer. Sure. So we've broken this down over a load of iterations. The tallest part is that high now printed in metal. So okay. it's more reliable. We can stack all of them hugging 
each other in the build. So it's a really dense build. And also we've moved some parts to polymer like that, which is okay. light, more lightweight um, because we just don't need the material properties there anymore because these now entrain cool air from the surroundings, pass it by the nozzle so that not much heat is conducted down to the arm mount. So Sam, uh if people want to learn more about gravity, where can they go? Where can they go to learn more about gravity? Uh, so gravity.co, okay. the, the website, um, at Take on Gravity for the Instagram uh, is where we're going to be publishing most of our stuff. And Gravity Industries on YouTube is a really good place to follow us. All right. um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been really cool to show it to all the SolidWorks users here. Um, it, it, there's, there's a lot in common of kind of, uh, of, of the design, talking to guys here, talking about the design process and how you go as quickly as possible from just building, printing, testing, scrapping it, taking, li <laughs> t taking little, little bits that you've learned from that design and then back into CAD, into SolidWorks and, and doing that, repeating that process. So it's been great to be here. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about Gravity, as Sam just mentioned, go to gravity.co. Uh, uh, check them out. Sam, I want to thank you for being here at 3D Experience World. Hopefully, you've had a really cool opportunity to uh, get involved with the community here. Yeah. And we're going to be right back in a few minutes. We're, uh, we're going to have another interview with um, Eric Haddad from 3D Aero Venture. So stay tuned. We're going to be coming right back.